every time I get on this bike, I'm ear to ear smiling. And I think that's really all it comes down to. I get on this bike, it makes me happy. Welcome everybody to On Two Feet. I hope you all had a relatively stress-free break. Um, it's been kind of a rough week and hopefully this year turns out to be a much better year than last year for many reasons. Um, so putting that aside, I was sitting here in my garage and got the Himalayan here and I was kind of flipping through the owner's manual and I realized that I forgot to talk about uh, the break-in period. And according to the owner's manuals, the full break-in period is 2,000 kilometers, which is about 1,250 miles. So on the last ride that I did um, out to that east pocket, I actually would, had flipped to 1,300 miles. So I kind of purposely ran the bike a little bit harder and just um, opened it up kind of to the max because I knew that I was okay to do so. And it was really important to me to make it through the break-in period before putting it up for winter so that I know like next spring when I bring it out, um, I don't really have to baby it at all. I can just kind of take it out, fire it up and let it rip. So with all that said, it, it has given me a chance to really reflect not just on the bike, but my experience going through the process of acquiring it and where it has left me thinking now about that process. In other words, uh, do I feel like I made the right decision, both just buying a bike in general and buying this bike? And has the bike been an overall good experience or good, I guess, success, I would say. So the easiest way I think to sum it up is to say that this motorcycle has served the exact purpose for which I bought it and for which I was hoping it would serve. So. I wanted a bike that I could take on 90 to 95% of the surfaces that I would want to go on that is capable, affordable, fairly approachable for someone that's more of a beginner like me, but also maintainable, something that I feel like I could tinker with confidently myself without fear of breaking something very expensive or avoiding all sorts of warranties. Uh, and something that I know would be capable of more involved, several day, um, multi-mode of transportation trips. So I mean, my ultimate goal is to take this motorcycle uh, on like week long camping, hiking, backpacking trips up to like the San Juans of Colorado next summer or say Utah, um, just go say drive up to Silverton or Durango or over to the Sangre de Cristos, drive it up a gnarly trailhead, camp at the trailhead, bang out a couple 14ers or do some, you know, several day hiking on like say the Colorado trail or something. And, you know, use it as a means for adventure itself, but use it as also as a means to get me to other types of adventure. So in all that respect, the positive has, uh, the experience has been positive and as I had hoped. So that's my way of saying yes, all of this has been a good decision. Now, getting this bike or a bike like this was essentially the realization of almost a 15 year journey. You know, I've known I've wanted to get a dual sport adventure bike uh, for, for again, almost 15 years. But every time that I got serious about it or started researching it, I always came away a little bit disappointed that I just couldn't find that bike that was like the one that spoke to me. I found a lot of bikes that were good, that were close, that got me a little bit excited, but never one where I was like, this is it. This is the one until I saw this bike. And so when I finally did fi find and discover this bike, uh, it, it, it was a pretty quick process. You know, I spent a lot of time researching it, probably about two months. But once I came to the decision that I wanted one, that the, the ball started rolling very quickly. I was able to test ride one in August. And then as soon as the pre-order came up on September 1st, I was able to get my name on it for the 2021, which is what this is. Uh, and then I, it was just a matter of waiting for it to come in during, you know, which was obviously delayed because of the pandemic. So, so yes, for those of you that are just like me, 
that are kind of surfing YouTube, trying to figure out what that bike is. Maybe you want something that um, you could kind of use in the same fashion as me. Like I did not want a $20,000 BMW. I mean, yeah, they're great and it would be fun to ride one, but too expensive. I'm not ready for something like that. And it would intimidate the heck out of me and I'd be terrified of dumping it because of, of how much it is, you know, how valuable it is. And with this bike, it's cheap enough where I was able to save and not have to finance it. And now I just own it and it's cheaper to insure. And you know, if, if I dump it, it's like, ah, darn, I got it to ding it up. That's kind of why I got it. I got it to rip it up, tear it up, tip it over, uh, to decide if riding like that even interests me. You know, I knew I liked riding my scooter. I knew I liked riding my motorcycles years ago, but there's a good chance that I'd get a bike like this, ride it for a season and be like, you know what? Eh, it's not really doing it for me. And then I've got to deal with selling it. And it's much easier to deal with something like this than a really expensive finance bike that I may have to sell or trade in or something. So again, all that has been positive. Affordable, approachable, maintainable. Those were kind of my three big things. And uh, you know, obviously you get what you pay for though, right? This is really important that you all know this. For me, this is the perfect bike right now in my life for what I wanna do. Someday, maybe I will wanna spend the 10 grand on a Tenere or the 15 grand on a GS or 800 GS or something. You know, who knows? That might very well happen or a Kawasaki or something. But right now, for my smaller framed body and the styling and the capability of this bike, there's just nothing else out there. Uh, there are some things to know about this bike just to factor into your decision. There's never gonna be a list of all pros. There's always gonna be some cons. And I've spoken about those cons before. Uh, I knew going in that this bike was only 24 horsepower, uh, but I knew, also knew it had a decent amount of torque in the low range. So. Um, I was okay with that. I don't envision myself ever wanting to go on multi-day highway trips. It's just not my thing right now. This bike doesn't do so well on Western interstates that are posted 75 miles an hour. Any sort of long distance adventures that I take on this bike are probably gonna be navigating through more rural or um, state routes or back roads. This thing will go 65, 60 to 65 all day long, but you get up to 70, it's, it's, not, it's not so great. Um, especially if you're trying to pass people, you know, I've had, I've had semi trailers passing me on the interstate on this little bike and it's, it's not comfortable, it's terrifying to be honest with you. The fact that it's capable, it was a 21 inch front tire capable of going on the terrain that I've taken it on far outweighs any sort of power negative issue. Um, but there are still other things, right? Like I've talked about the windshield, easily rectified with the new taller windshield. Uh, now I don't get the wind buffeting. What else? Uh, you know, the vibration. It's a single cylinder thumper, so it vibrates a ton. So I learned the hard way that you can't mount a nice cell phone to it because you will destroy the camera image stabilization. It's just how it is. So if you want something smooth, you know, maybe you want to look for a twin. You know, that's just, that's just what it is. So. I look at the spoked wheels and the knobby tires and the, you know, the panniers and sort of the look of it. And I'm like, who cares? I don't care that it, that it vibrates. I'd rather have all this other good stuff that is important to me. Um, you know, maybe you don't get quite get the quality that you would get with a, say a BMW, you know, obviously a $5,000 motorcycle isn't going to have the level of materials and quality of equipment put into it that a 15 to $20,000 bike is going to have. And you know, that's already been evident by the fact that I've had to take apart the instrument cluster to fix a vibration, but I don't care. The fact that I was able to service it and maintain it myself, uh, I think is a better plus than the fact that maybe it doesn't have the most expensive parts in it. So there's that. Um, but along the same lines of parts, the fact that there's so many aftermarket parts for this bike is a huge win, right? I've already got the Bark Busters on here. I've got the new windshield. Uh, I'm gonna probably order some kind of bags or tanks for the for these front racks. I'm gonna get an engine guard. I've already got some like smaller guards. I've got the rear cylinder guard and the little reservoir guard. Um, I got the better seat, the panniers. You know, I've just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, accessorize this thing to the gills and and that's awesome and the accessories are cheap 
well, with the exception of the factory panniers, you're gonna pay for those, but uh, most of the accessories are pretty cheap. All of that's summarized for you all that are, are in the same position as I was. You're really trying to find a bike that's capable of all these things I've described. Every time I get on this bike, I'm ear to ear smiling. And I think that's really all it comes down to. I get on this bike, it makes me happy. It makes me smile. I have been rambling for 15 minutes now, all to say the simple thing of, uh, this was the right call. And I have enjoyed almost every moment on this bike. A few moments that I was a little bit scared or terrified. Ooh, I almost spun out right there. Almost lost it. Uh, but I guess in some twisted way, I even enjoyed those moments because it was a way to test myself. Uh, and I'm always about challenging myself. And I feel like when I get on this uh, motorcycle, I can go to get out there and explore just about anywhere I want. So yeah, I hope this was helpful. I'm happy to answer questions. So far, uh, there has been no major problems other than my flat tire, which was just stupid luck. I ran over a nail. Um, and uh, yeah, all, all just really positive experiences. So all right, so I thought maybe I'd just do a quick walkthrough of the bike to not only show you some of the accessories that I put on so far, but also to kind of um, reflect on some of the experiences I've had with certain things so that, um, I don't know, it's just the more information, the better. So I figure uh, why not share some of this stuff with you. So here's the bike, 2021 Royal Enfield Himalayan in the rock red color. Um, so the 21 does come with the uh, switchable ABS, which you can't see right now because I've got a bag over the instrument cluster. Um, it comes with the hazard lights, which are right here. And it also comes with um, supposedly slightly better brakes, uh, which, you know, the brakes still aren't amazing. They're good. They're adequate. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I would have noticed the difference between these brakes and the old brakes. Um, so let's see, starting in the front, um, I did put in the little fender risers. I got, a, I got a set of those, which have definitely made a difference. I, I noticed a lot of the rocks were getting kind of jammed up in there uh, when I would go on some like really muddy and kind of rough terrain. So now things just clear pretty, pretty easily. Um, let's see, I've got a couple of little like guards that I have installed. So I installed this rear master cylinder guard and this little reservoir guard here as well. Um, somehow I got the, the fancier oil plug. I have no idea how I got that. It was just like, it came, I think they ordered it by accident and the, at the dealership and put that on. So, um, I did take off the rubber from the foot pegs, which has just been way better because, um, I, I feel like I get much more grip. And also on the other side, um, I was finding it really hard to get my toe up under the shifter just because it was sitting so high, my foot. So now it sits a bit lower and I find it much easier to shift um, cleanly and just without really thinking about it. Um, I do have the a um, plug installed, um, an ad SAE plug installed on the battery running into my tender right now over there. Um, I've put all my registration documents in a, in a, um, a lock sack, which is just one of these waterproof bags that when you fold it over, uh, it fits perfectly in there and closes up nicely. So um, I saw one YouTube video where uh, the, the guy routed his temperature sensor um, back into here, which I may do because my temperature sensor on the dash always records temperatures that are like 15 degrees too warm. So... Uh, I've got the seats off right now, as you can see, because um, I just want to storm inside. Um, the panniers have been great. Uh, I use them all the time. One thing I have noticed, though, is, and I don't know if this is because I knocked the bike over or just because it's really a tight fit, but if you look here, you can actually see, like, it doesn't quite line up. Uh, I don't know how they got this in, but it's, like, slightly off-center where it goes in. It's on the other side. is really bad, too. You can kind of see. See how it's, like, off offset there it's very strange i had to um drill new holes for the license plate so that's something you'll have to do at least in the u.s um i i ended up going with the expensive bark busters and i love them they keep my hands warm and protected the wind is like completely gone from 
any rides now. I did get the taller windshield, which because of the Bark Busters, I've ha I had to move the windshield into the forward position. So you can see that. So it, it is a little bit more like vertical and probably creates a little bit more wind resistance. Uh, I did get this mount uh, for my phone before I knew that basically a uh, single cylinder destroys phones. Um, so I, I put these little like pieces of foam padding in there to kind of help with the vibration. But since then, I've just gone to using my old phone because uh, I don't care if the camera breaks on it and I can just use it with navigation. So eventually I'm going to get some sort of mount and get like a GPS unit so that I, I am probably a Garmin or something. One of the things that I've thought about maybe doing is this you know, instead of getting two fuel canisters for these front racks, just get one. And then on the other side, get one of those like little bags and then just put my tools and my owner's manual in that bag. Uh, and then I, you know, I still have one extra fuel canister. Um, so I may do that. That, that kind of sounds like a good solution. Maybe I do like the, um, skid plate. That's definitely helped a few times. I've, I've, um, had a few rocks come up and fling off of that. Oh, 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 well, that was the skid plate. <laughs> Oof. I may get a guard for that front uh, oil cooler. Might get a new battery as well uh, at some point, but for now, she's running good, fully charged, nice and green on the tender over there. All right, well, that's it. Thank you all for, for uh, walking through with me on the bike. And um, I guess one last thing I could say is that the... The Pirellis have been great. Um, I have forgotten to, to air them down a little bit on some of the rougher terrain, which I think would have really helped on some of the rocky stuff. Um, they've been really good. So um, I did put my Antarctica sticker finally on, so I'm pretty excited about that too. Good luck on your journey of trying to discover what bike is right for you. And happy to answer questions. Have a great start to your new year. Take care and be safe.